Welcome to my YouTube channel and uh, today it's another road trip for Neil and Gilio. I'm uh, obviously here in the RV but Gilio, we are at an Anytime Fitness and uh, Gilio is actually in the Anytime Fitness. I'm just parked on the street here in the in the village outside of the Anytime Fitness waiting for him so I thought oh I should check in with my audience and see how they're doing and let, him, let them know um, what we're up to so yeah so i'm excited anytime we go out on a road trip i'm excited so even though it's terrible weather here in california it's so rainy it's just like non-stop rain atmospheric river after atmospheric river but it's just too difficult we have this new panoramic rv we're heading first to um sacramento we have uh, some family to visit there and then we're heading up up into the sierra foothills that is where my uh, parents have some land and we're going to set up camp there and visit for a little while and then uh, just kind of relax. Um, meanwhile, why don't you hang out with me? I'm just going to get my first cup of tea. I have not broken fast yet, so that'll happen here mm, shortly. Why don't you hang out with me as I do that and then I'll check in with you about how things have been going on the panoramic. All right. <coughs> Gotta refill that one when we get home, so I'll just put that there. Gotta remember to stow it before we take off. Always gotta keep these little checklists in my head, otherwise that bottle will go rolling off the counter and probably shatter, but I've gotten pretty good at it. I think I got one bag left. Time to refill that. Oops. There's nothing worse than being on the road, and pulling over, and just wanting a nice cup of your favorite tea, only to find that you're out of it. I suppose that's a first world problem. And you are in a class B, so I guess you could just drive down to the grocery store and replenish, but still, you know what I mean. It's, you want your cup of tea, you want your cup of tea. I just noticed um, <clears throat> the trash that's right down below you. There's trash in it. So <clears throat> I don't think that's a good idea for me to keep it in there because uh, the smells could invite little rodents to try to get up into the, uh, into the coach. So that's another thing. I gotta remember every time I leave the, the van to check that no matter how much trash is in there, I probably just need to empty it because I don't want that smell <clears throat> attracting rodents and coming inside. Yeah, so how's the shakedown period? It's been a little bit over a month since we've had the panoramic. I gotta say, it's been really good. Uh, have not really had many problems at all with the with the RV. Uh, out of the three RVs that I've owned, <clears throat> a Road Trek, a 2014 Road Trek, CF, CS Adventurous, and 2017 um, Pleasure Way Ascent, and now this Panoramic, this has had the least problems during the shakedown period. Knock on wood. I mean, we're still early in the shakedown period. So I consider a shakedown period to be, you know, the first, probably the first year, maybe the first, like, eight months but certainly like the first year so we're only like a month into it <clears throat> the only things that i can report so far that i've um i've reported to panoramic is the uh, black tank gauge is not working it's reporting err and so they're having me uh they're taking a look at that to try to figure out is it a problem with the gauge itself in which case so some of you guys had questions like what happens when there's a problem like this 
what do you do? Because Panoramic's in Canada and they don't have any U.S. dealerships. So um, normally, well, we'll find out, but uh, what will happen is, like in this case, they'll send out a replacement part. Let's say it's the gauge itself or maybe it's the monitor. I don't know what it is. <clears throat> and then I will take that to some uh, RV repair shop. Um, it can be anyone, basically, as long as they're good and reputable. And um, they'll do the repair and then and then Panoramic will pay for it. So it'll all be handled directly. It won't involve me at all, <coughs> other than dropping off the RV and picking it up. But Panoramic will take care of all of it. That's theoretically how it's supposed to work. This is the first time for me on this RV. The only problem that, that, that <coughs> could arise from that is if, let's go down at the, at the table and, and chat. Mm. I love that pepperminty smell. Um, so the only problem that could <coughs> come up with that is if the dealership is just slammed with their own customers that are bringing their RVs in, then generally what will happen is that they will <coughs> work on their own customers' RVs first, and then if there's an opening or a cancellation or something like that, then they'll, they'll work on you. So it could mean that there's some delays in when they get to your RV. But I'll report back on that with you and see you know, if that's happening or not. Again, hopefully there's just not a lot of problems that come up with the panoramic. I mean, that's why you pay a premium and, that, and they do offer a five-year warranty, but you really want it to be where there's just not a lot of problems. And see, there might be some type of, you know, Pierce, problem with, I'm trying to get the WineGuard digital TV antenna <clears throat> to work. I don't really use it, but as you can see, I'm here, you know, in the village here, and I should be getting digital TV signals uh, and program, you know, I'm programming the smart TV using the WineGuard antenna, but it's not picking up any channels at all. So I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or I don't, I don't know if there's a problem with the, again, with the wine guard. So <clears throat> I'm going to have to also report that, but these are minor issues compared to what I've run into before. All in all, you know, in comparison to my, my past experience, um, I feel like I'm pretty lucky, like with the overall, with the three RVs that I've had, but with the panoramic, if it's just a few of these things, um, then I feel like I'm I'm pretty fortunate. I'm not going to complain. Mm. You know, there's just nothing like, I like a, when it's cold and wet outside and storming and I like being inside the RV where it's cozy. I got the Truma Combi. That's another thing, guys. Like, <clears throat> I never realized how much I'd really appreciate <clears throat> the Truma Combi heating system. <clears throat> it's so quiet. Like, it's on right now, but you guys don't hear it. Like, you probably hear the highway noise more than you hear the Truma Combi. The Truma, I like the fact the Truma is um, a combination heater and water heater. So I get both in one and its efficiency comes from that fact that uh, the, uh, when I'm heating the coach like I am right now, the water is also being heated. So I don't have to have a separate water boiler to, um, to have hot water. So yeah. Um, yeah, so far so good. I'm pretty happy. My decision to be using the van every day and living out of the van every day during the day in order to save on my heating bill. Guys, I was reading on Nextdoor. Almost everyone I'm reading on Nextdoor has paying double the amount that they were paying last year with their energy bills right in the middle of of winter when you need to, you know, you need a lot of energy to heat. And so every it's not just me. Like I my bill was up to 1700 last month. And because I went to pg and &E's website and I, I asked them to do a projection of what this month is going to be, and because I've been coming into the RV, shutting down completely the heat in the house during the day, um, I've cut my heating bill down by $1,000, so it's down to $700 a month. So that's, that's good. So I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to keep living and working out of the RV as much as I can, at least through this winter, because I'm just... I'm not prepared and I'm not, I'm just philosophically not going to pay that much money every month for heating, like close to $2,000 a month. That's just, that's rent. 
you know that that's rent that you're paying to the to pg and e so anyway thank you panoramic thank you for giving me an option and an alternative all right we're going to wait for Julio to get back and then i think we're going to both break fast together probably there's a right next door here is a starbucks convenient so i think we're going to do a little impossible breakfast sandwiches and coffees and then we'll catch up with you later um, and let you know how our as we hit the road how things are going all right take care bye on the road okay we are getting ready to take off we just got uh, a call in from uh, our final destination up in the Sierra foothills who recommended that maybe we postpone our trip because the weather's so bad mm -hmm. up there they said it's really rainy raining hard and the winds are really whipping down through the Sierra mountains there so we decided we're gonna first you know do the first part of our trip we're going to go to san francisco quickly then sacramento then sacramento and then we'll call in from sacramento and see if the weather's still bad and make a decision but right now our plan is we're good for going so we're glad to have you along with our trip and let's hit the road yes I'm all excited. We're going on another road trip. <laughs> I love when we go on road trips. Right, guys we are in san francisco really it wasn't too bad getting here um there was not a lot of traffic and so we are picking up what we need to pick up here in san francisco so just a brief stop and then we're going to hit the road back over the bridge we're going to sacramento it's not raining right now which is good and we're fingers crossed we're hoping it holds up but um but we'll see so going to sacramento should be no problem I mean, it might be storming, but it's a major freeway, so we're okay. There was reports of some flooding where we're trying to get to in Sacramento, but we've decided if we can't see the roadway because there's flooding, we're, we're not going to take a chance. We're not going to drive through it, which is common sense. But as long as we can see the roadway and like go around some of the flooding, then we're good to go. We're going to continue on our trip. And then we will call uh, our destination in... Um, this our final destination in the Sierra foothills to see how the weather is there. So stay with us as we continue on our journey. Right now, I've got this um, Bose speaker. So we've got two of them in the RV. One's in the back in the bedroom because the speaker on the TV in the bedroom is a little bit tinny. So we've got one in the back and then we brought this one from the house and we're gonna have this one hooked up in the front here because it produces so much better sound than kind of the built-in. I got to say the the built-in stereo system on the ProMaster, it's okay. I mean, it's got speakers up here and then speakers down below, but 
even with the little equalizer thing they have on the radio, it's just not as full as we'd like it to be. So I'm going to hook this up and then we're going to see how that sounds. And then hopefully Jillia will be back and we will hit the road. So we'll see you in a few. Still here waiting for Jillio to get back. And I was just checking the black tank and look at that. Look at that. It's working. So so battery, fresh, gray, black, liquid propane, they're all working. So I don't know, guys. I'm going to report that to Panoramic. I wonder because of all the rain and the flooding, you know, was as, as I was driving, um, through some you know puddles and splashing up under the RV. It shouldn't happen, but I'm wondering if some water got up in there to, on the sensor and it was just shorting it out, um, which shouldn't be happening, but it's good news that it's working now because at least we know what the level is. But, uh, so that's good news, but I thought I'd just share that, share that with you. Okay, so Julio is back and we are ready to hit the road. And we're going to be heading towards Sacramento. Hopefully, fingers crossed, the weather holds for us. So come along with us as we go on our little road trip adventure. And uh, hopefully, things are going to be okay on our route to Sacramento. All right, ready to go, Julio? Yep. Let's do it. arrived in Sacramento for our family function and uh, we're gonna head in now I don't know if you guys know but um, so Julio's Filipino and uh, these Filipino family functions are always huge like everyone's there they're a lot of fun and tons of good food so we're just going to visit with the uh, relatives and the family a little bit and have some good food and then we're gonna check in with our final destination as we head up into the Sierra foothills to make sure that the weather is still clear for us so we can uh, arrive at our our final destination tonight. So I'll check back in with you uh, after we kind of say hello to the family and everyone. All right. Hey, look at all this delicious food. It's like a whole plate of food. All right, we're going to try. Like this, I'm, gonna, I'm digging into the seasick first. This is the seasick. Mm. Oh my gosh, it's like a. So the seasick, it tastes like a carne asada, basically. So good. And this is the fish. Let's play the fish. Mm, oh, it's like a filet fish. It's better than Long John Silver. It's so good. It's spiced just right. Here's an eggplant. Oh man, that's just so almost creamy texture. With some tofu. All right, I'm gonna finish eating. 
and we'll check back in with you once we uh, find out what the weather's like as uh, up uh, in the Sierra foothills. Okay. We are uh, just heading now to Placerville. We stayed a little bit later. <laughs> so it's dark out and late at night. Uh, but we're yeah we're gonna we're gonna make the trip anyways, so we're um, heading up the heading up the, to the Sierra foothills. It looks like the weather is cleared up, so we should be good. Uh, we had a great time, right? It was yeah, really good. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, always good visiting with Julio's family, and we'll check in with you once we're in Placerville. All right, take care. We're finally here. Uh, it's almost midnight, uh, and there was a lot of rain the whole way. Lots, Heavy rain lots, and lots flooding rain. on the roads, <laughs> and it's still raining. Um, and we had a slight mishap with the um, shade over there on the door. The, it broke, so we got to try to fix it tomorrow. Like when we were closing the van door as we were leaving, the one of the lines snapped, and so now it just it just doesn't stay up but i think we can salvage it it's not a big deal we're not worried about it but we're gonna go to bed now so we'll see you tomorrow morning How is everyone? Um, we're fixing this blind this morning. That's definitely on the to-do list. Hey, good morning, guys. We made it in okay. It um, finally stopped raining, but it's beautiful here. Oh my gosh. Uh, Julio's still asleep in the back, so I'm kind of being a little bit quiet. It's just early morning here in the uh, mountains where we're at here for our final destination. And it's so quiet, it's so beautiful. You hear the birds? Isn't that lovely? So um, last night was nice. The rain was just pattering on the roof, just because we're under these pine trees here. And so they're just pattering. Last night just dappled. I just kind of lulled you to sleep. Um, 
we used the electric blanket just on the base of the bed. So it was just kind of like just really low key warm. And then we had our blankets on top of us. Got a busy day ahead of us. That blind that fell on the door, me, <laughs> last night before I went to bed, I researched on YouTube like how to fix it. And uh, there is a fix. Apparently this is a common problem when the, uh, when the uh, line that hangs it actually breaks for some reason. So I'm gonna fix that, uh, hopefully. Maybe if I'm successful, I'll show you how to do that. But, um, and then just gonna uh, kind of enjoy nature up here. And I might try to show you the river I bet that I can hear it. I don't know if you can hear it. I can hear it behind me. It's really going strong. But uh, yeah, maybe show you the property a little bit. And then I'll be, that'll be it. Might make a meal or two in the van. I'm not quite sure. But uh, anyways, we're also going to enjoy the cozy fire in the uh, ooh, the house down, down below there. Okay, I'll check with you a little bit later after, uh, after Julio gets up. Morning guys, Julio's finally up. We're gonna uh, pick up some some eggs and some lumpia from the family gathering last night and we're gonna go inside the house and make some breakfast. So we'll check in with you guys later. This is a very international breakfast of Japanese, you see here, Filipino with lumpia, and scrambled eggs and bacon, American. And Korean. And Korean. Mm -hmm. As they say in Japanese, itetakimasu. We had some storm damage here at the property. Some fallen limbs here, you can see. But, we think the worst of it is over. It's really out. Mm, that was a delicious Filipino American Japanese breakfast <laughs> and uh, that's how we do it here. All right, it's time to get the day started. This is going to take up probably most of my afternoon and that is we are going to be trying to repair this blind here. So as you can see, like when you lift it up and down, it's not working because this here is the string and it broke. It's really frayed pretty badly. I don't know if you can see it's, it's fraying, but I just want to temporarily get it fixed and then I'll buy new string and put it in later, but um, there may not be enough string to actually fix it because there's a, there's a spring up here that each side connects to and it provides the tension for when you lift it up and down and I just don't know if there's enough string left for this side, so I'm going to try it and see. I've never done it before. I'm a little bit bummed that I'm doing this and the RV is only one month old. That's not so much of a ding for panoramic as it is for this component, this blind. But I'll be honest with you, I've owned three RVs with three different types of blinds and all of them have had problems. I would have expected this particular blind this shade to have lasted longer <laughs> than a month um, before it broke so I already let panoramic know that I what the problem is and kind of they need if they don't already know they may already know that the quality of this particular manufacturer I think is lacking it's not it's not of the quality I think 
matches the rest of the panoramic, which is much higher quality. So in any case, that does not fix the situation that we're in now, which is we have a broken blind that needs to get repaired. If I can't repair it, which there's a very good possibility I can't, then I'm just gonna take it down for now and just leave it off so it's not flopping around when you're shutting the, the RV door and then wait for a repair kit to come in. Okay, down. All right, let's um, head to the work area and take this thing apart and see if it's repairable. I think I found at least the root cause of the problem. So we're looking at the top of the blind. So just to orient you, this is the spring that provides the tension at the top. And then each side, these strings go down and they go down here along here and so when it's pulled tight this line the string is pulled really tight here and as you raise and lower the blind the string passes through this grommet here and what I noticed on this grommet is see how it's malformed there's some sharp plastic on the edge there see it and that sharp plastic is what, as the blind has been going up and down, has been fraying. You can actually see it here. See how frayed it is? So it's been fraying it until finally it got to this point and it just broke. And if you go look at this side, this side has a nice, clean, metal, smooth grommet. And so and look, there's no fraying of this string, of this nylon string here. As a temporary fix, I've got to figure out how to connect these two. And if I tie a knot, which is not ideal, it might be too big to actually fit through that grommet. i got to tell you, though, these are really, really cheaply made. I'm not impressed with them at all. This is a completely flimsy piece of plastic. The blind material itself, this is what I'm talking about. You know, you just, when you start pulling stuff apart, look at that. It's just stapled in. The staples aren't even, look at that, they're not even bent over. So this is just waiting over time to just pull out of here. And the blinds are just waiting. Look at that, it's just cheaply stapled in. These are very cheap blinds. I hope that Panoramic replaces these because this is not the quality level of components that I think should be on a Panoramic. But anyway, we'll get these working. Um, let me get this string a solution for the string what I'm gonna do with it and then uh, next time I see you I'll either have found a temporary solution and we'll be putting the blinds up or not in which case the blinds will just stay down okay I have restrung it um, I did a little bit of a cheat I took the two it since the the wire or the string is nylon I just took a candle <laughs> and I melted the two ends. And then I just used my finger like this and I just bonded the two ends of the string, to, uh, the nylon string together. And it seems to be fine. So that's a temporary fix. Obviously I'm gonna order the replacement string, but for now I'm hoping, I don't know, I'm hoping it's working. So I'm gonna reattach it and then reattach the um, tensioners down below and Let's see if it at least kind of works. I don't know. At least it, hopefully it won't be falling down. It'll just be up. That's that's my goal. I'm not making it so that it actually works. I'm just making it so that it stays up. How's that? I think that's a that's a doable goal. Let's try it. Hey, what do you guys think? I'll just leave them up. But it looks like it works. Yay. All fixed. Okay, we're done. It's fixed, babe. If I cough, it's a wrap. Babe, that's where you say good job. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was the big 
job for today. I'm happy that I got that to work. It was just bothering us because we couldn't really use the sliding door because it was just flopping around. And uh, there was a danger that as we opened and closed the sliding door, it would flop out and, and get caught between the frame of the van and the sliding door and maybe do some real damage to the blinds. But now, at least for now, it's uh, staying up. It's working. We can pull it down. Anyway, it is time to move the van. We were just parked in this temporary spot last night when we arrived because it was rainy and it was cold. We just kind of wanted to just you know, get to bed. But now it's time to move it on the property. There's a flatter area because we're a little bit tilted here. There's a flatter area over there that also has electrical, which we're going to use because we're going to plug the, uh, the, you know, the, the Truma Combi system will use the electrical for heating and for water the water heater and it'll also recharge the battery so it's perfect uh, we'll just hook that one line up and uh, it will have a flat area to uh, sleep when we sleep in her so and then i'm going to get to work on some work i need to do so let's get her moved over As, as you guys all know, I usually don't do any hookups when we're camping, but in this particular case, um, I do occasionally use electricity because it makes sense uh, with the Truma Combi. If I didn't have the Truma Combi, I definitely wouldn't um, have any hookups, but with the Truma Combi, I'm going to for sure. Okay. Okay, well, I'm not going to show you, but uh, but we did catch the little mouse. We set mouse traps up in here uh, last night, but we had to do it. It was still in the RV, obviously, and it got cold last night, as you could see from the video. So um, anyway, it did its uh, it did its job, but uh, yeah, we got to figure out how they're getting in and seal that up to make sure. Uh, we don't have this problem again in the future. Um, today is our final day up here. Finally, the rain stopped and it's beautiful. Blue sky is cold. But uh, we're going to wrap up and then head back down to the Bay Area. But um, we'll check in with you guys once we're packed up and have hit the road. It is time to be heading back. We had a really nice weekend. We met with your family. Yeah. Yeah. For the, the birthday party. And then we were up here at my family. Ate lots of food. Ate lots of food. Yeah. I got some, uh, you know, the shakedown continues on the panoramic. So, um, you know, you saw me fix the blinds. That's good. Oh, by the way, turns out I talked to panoramic today and boy, they're just really on top of stuff. Uh, they are going to send me a new blind, even though I repaired that one. They're going to send me a new one that I can pop in. They are going to, they sent me instructions on how to calibrate the gauge for the liquid propane. So as soon as I fill it up the next time, I can just recalibrate it and make sure that that's working okay. And yeah, so I'm very happy about that. So we had a few little things. Oh, mm -hmm. and with regards to the mouse. Yeah. <laughs> Poor little mouse. Uh, Panoramic said that shouldn't be happening. There's no way that any little mice or rodents should be able to get up inside the coach. So obviously there's either some tiny little hole somewhere that they're getting in that um, we'll have to find. And if we find, they'll patch it up. Or, I don't know, sometimes I don't slide the sliding door completely shut. Mm. And there's a little bit of a gap there. And that could be enough that a mouse could get in. So we're just going to monitor it and see if we get another little mouse in here or not. Um, yeah. Hopefully we don't. Hopefully not. Yeah. But other than that, it's been a great trip. And now it's time to hit the road. So thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it and love having you guys along. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.